Dear brothers and sisters, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, both now and forever. I wish you a blessed, fruitful new week. The gospel passage we have today is a very beautiful one. In fact, it's one of those passages that I love so much. And I will also encourage you to find time to read it, read it again, and reflect on it because it contains a lot of lessons. Remember, that this passage comes immediately after the transfiguration. Jesus previously took Peter, James, and John up the mountain, and there he was transfigured. Now, as they came down, they encountered a sort of commotion, people making all kinds of arguments. Now, This reflection, which I am sharing with you at this moment, I just want us to reflect on one important thing. Will I call it a human reality? It is about failure. Failure. Failure is seen by different people in different ways. There are people who see failure as a lesson. There are those who see failure as opportunity. There are those who see failure as curse. There are those who see failure as blessing in disguise. How do you see failure? What's your notion about failure? What's your concept of failure? If you look at the gospel passage we we have today, you will see clearly that the reality of failure comes directly to us. Jesus came down, as I said, after the transfiguration with uh, Peter, James, and John and met the other nine apostles of course, together with the disciples and the crowd. And you know that there's a man who brought the son who was uh, possessed. And the disciples of Jesus, they were not able to cast out that demon. If you look at the description given by the father of the boy, in our modern eyes, you will immediately say that the boy was epileptic. But Mark did not call it that. But the fact is that a typical Jewish person believes that there's a connection between sin and sickness. So every sin is connected to a certain sickness, or every sickness is connected to a certain sin, and the demon is usually responsible for that. Let's not worry ourselves about this, but the fact is this. When you encounter failures in your life, your marriage, your vocation, your profession, your business, what do you usually do? You tell your friends or you tell God. I believe strongly, as I shared with you before, that whatever you say to God remains between you and God. But the things you share with your friends, your friends, they have other friends who have other friends. So your topic becomes a a social topic and it will cause you more pain. I am not in any way negating the reality of searching for professional help but if you search for professional help in moments of your you know crisis those professionals they have professional ethics and i'm sure they will not share your case it's just like the 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 priest that you we make confession to bound by the confessional seal a priest can never divulge or reveal whatever you have shared with him but the fact is that the only person we can give 100 percent trust is god In the moments of our failures, who do we discuss it with? Who do we share it with? If you look at what happened in the gospel today, you will see that people recognize in Jesus the person they should share their failures with. When this man encountered failure because disciples were not able to cast the demon out, this man expressed himself to Jesus. When the disciples got home, they also expressed themselves to Jesus because they asked Jesus, why were we not able to cast out the demon? My dear brothers and sisters, the first thing I like us to think about here is what Jesus actually did. In all humility, when Jesus came down and saw the commotion, saw the misunderstanding, saw the argument, he practically asked what was happening. Many of us, when we encounter situations, we just jump into the situation. We don't even care to ask what is happening. Remember that Jesus is God. Of course, he knew what was happening. But why did he ask what is happening? It is simply because he wanted 
his disciples and the crowd to be part of the discussion. He wanted them to express themselves. He wanted them to feel that sense of belonging. He did not want to impose his knowledge of the situation on them. In the same way, God gives us opportunity every day to express our failures to him, to express the, the, the pains we have from the things that we expected to happen in a certain way that did not happen in that way. So Jesus gave them opportunity to express themselves. And that's why it's important for us to understand that failures are opportunity for us to express ourselves, our limitations and weaknesses to God. Again, Jesus also gave the same opportunity to this man, to the father of the boy. And the father of the boy said to Jesus, if you can't, Jesus said, wow, <laughs> of course, everything is possible for God. And it's true, what God cannot do does not exist. And Jesus gave him opportunity, so he expressed himself. He told Jesus how the sickness started, how long this boy has suffered. Of course, Jesus is God, so he knew the origin of that sickness. He knew the duration of that sickness. He knew how it started. He knows everything. But why did he ask this man, the father of the boy? He just wanted the man to be part of that story. He wanted to see that expression. He wanted the man to take responsibility of whatever is going to happen because it's not as if God does not you know, know what we, we want or what we need. But he allows us to express ourselves so that we may be responsible for whatever he's going to give to us so that it will not look like God is imposing anything on us. My dear brothers and sisters, it was St. Therese of the child Jesus who said that prayer is an interaction, interaction between friends. Now, the first thing we have to do in moments of our failures is to recognize that God is our friend and God is that trustworthy friend. The only person we can share our problems with. And once we recognize this, it will be easier for us to speak to God. The disciples failed to cast out this demon because it's possible they were doing it based on their own strength. They were not, you know, doing it in the name of Jesus. And that's what prayer is. Prayer means that interaction, that, you know, that interaction whereby we enter into communion with God. We enter into fellowship with God. You know, we become one with God so that the things that are being done are no longer done by us, but through the power of Jesus. We have to recognize this, actually. And that's what the first reading tells us, you know, the wisdom of God. Jesus is the wisdom of God. And for every human being recognizing this, that's also an act of wisdom that we are able to recognize that Jesus is the only solution. So don't do things by your own strength. If you do things by your own strength, you are bound to fail. The best way to achieve success is to go to Jesus, to involve Jesus, because he wants to be involved. He wants to help us. And that's why he comes to us. That's why he came down from the mountain after the transfiguration, he joined with the people. He encountered his own disciples in the moment of their failure. We will fail in the absence of Jesus. Jesus was away in the mountain. That's why disciples were, you know, unable to cast out the demon. As we are beginning this new week, I am thinking that the best decision and the wisest decision we can make is to entrust our plans to Jesus is to entrust ourselves to Jesus, to express to him the things we intend to do. Failure, once again, is not a curse, but failure is opportunity. You know, it's an opportunity that God gives to us in order to return to him. Failure is not a curse. Failure is on the pathway to success. If you don't fail, you don't grow. If you don't fail, you don't improve. If you don't fail, you don't learn your lessons. So, dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is here to help us. Do not do things by your own strength. As you can see, disciples tried by their own strength and they failed. And Jesus made it abundantly clear that you failed because you were not able to interact with me. As I said, prayer is an interaction. And as soon as we understand this, as soon as we bring God on board in our relationship, in our families, in our business, in everything that concerns us, our profession, our vocation, 
as soon as we are humble enough to allow Jesus to come on board, success, prosperity, fruitfulness, growth, improvement will surely be given to us. Failures should not become a sort of imprisonment for you. Do not imprison yourself in your failure. If you have encountered failure in any aspect of your life, recognize that God is creating a space for you. You failed because you're a human being. You are not a God. We fail because we are contingent. And that's why God comes to us in our Lord Jesus Christ. So like the father of this boy, let us come to Jesus. Let us ask him to increase our faith. Look at the process of the growth of the faith of this man. In the beginning, he didn't have that strong faith. But when he entered into interaction, conversation with Jesus, you could see the metamorphosis of his faith. You could see the improvement of his faith. You could see the progress in his faith. He instantly said to Jesus, Please increase my faith. Prayer is an act of surrender. It's an act of submission, total submission. If you encounter failure, or even if you don't encounter failure, let us learn, like this man, or from this man, to entrust even the little effort that we have, even the little conviction that we have. God understands you. He understands our dynamics. So just learn to be humble and then trust everything to him. He will surely transform and change your sorrows to joy. He will change your you know, sadness to happiness and your failures to success, fruitfulness, and prosperity. God bless you. Please do well to share this video. And thank you.